Hourglass, the charity which used to be known as Action on Elder Abuse, would like to see shops do much more to control the sale of vouchers to vulnerable people who are targeted by scams. Rachel Nicholson is from the charity. We're very concerned. We know that older people are disproportionately affected by scams such as this because they're seen as vulnerable, because there's such a, um, a shame about being scammed and that it's been recognised that older people don't like to report things, they don't want to talk to their family if they have been scammed. And so they, they know, the scammers know that, and that's why they're targeted, because they're seen as vulnerable. Rachel says training staff in how to spot when a customer might be under pressure and how best to intervene could make all the difference in cases like Lynn's. I don't think there's anything wrong with someone saying, I've noticed you're spending quite a lot on, on gift cards today. Um, we actually have a policy where we need to ask you if that's okay, what you're spending this on, or rather, are you aware that there is a scam taking place where someone is threatened to buy cards because of a, a debt that they may have or they've been told that they have? It's putting a huge responsibility on the staff, isn't it? It is, but the, the good that can come from asking a question far outweighs the possible embarrassment or the slightly unease at, at asking someone a question and being told it's none of your business. And, and somebody going in to spend a lot of money on their daughter for their birthday will look very different to someone who's been harassed and shouted at. Well, when we spoke to the retailers from whom Lynn bought the vouchers, Wilco told us staff did attempt to intervene and tried to do everything they could to warn Lynn of the possibility of fraud. Wilco says the manager of the branch in which Lynn spent £1,000 and a security guard questioned her repeatedly and asked if she was aware of gift card scams. Wilco says that despite this, Lynn insisted on making the purchase, believing that it was for legitimate reasons. Because it can't stop the vouchers being spent once the codes are passed on to a third party, Wilco said it was unable to refund Lynn. Wilco also told us it tries to do everything it can to spot and stop scams, including placing a limit on the value of gift cards that can be sold without the approval of a manager. Meanwhile, Morrison's also told us its staff require a manager's authorization for Amazon gift card sales of more than £250 and added that staff will question customers about the purchase in order to determine if they have fallen victim to a scam. Morrison says it also places signs at the gift card stand, warning customers of the scam. As for Amazon itself, it also pointed to warnings, this time on the gift cards themselves. Amazon said people should not provide the details on the back of the card to someone you do not know or trust. Lynn says she was so wrapped up in the scam and said,